Okay, in this film we're going to go over double underhooks, so we're going to review a student video. Let me go ahead and start that so it'll play. So this is going to be double underhooks, and right here we have one of our students in self-defense course. She's pinning her head to the chest. She's got double underhooks here, and if you notice down here, she's got a perpendicular stance to the person that she's about to take down, so she's kind of, what I would say is she's teed up her position. So she's teed up her stance, essentially making a T on the ground here. So the double underhooks will give her control of this person's hips, so it won't be able to get his hips away. She's going to use her head, which is pinned up against the chest, to push. So she's going to push here on the shoulder and pull in with her hands and use her back leg to trip this individual up and, and take them to the ground. So let's go ahead and watch the video. So here she is pushing and using the leg to trip. And so here's the slow-mo version of it. So let me stop it again. She's going to pin her head on one side of the body. So she's teed up her legs. You can't see it right now. But she's clasping her hands. So let's go ahead and go to the next frame. And on this next frame it'll show that she has clasped clasps her hands and then she's bumping this back leg so she's using her back leg here to bump um, this individual's leg to throw them off balance and then she's going to use her head to drive them back so she's going to use her head to drive them to the ground now you may notice on this other frame let me back that up real quick so let me go back to standing here's one small mistake so if you're practicing this skill you don't want any space. She really needs to be using her head along with the leg. Now sometimes the leg is enough, but you don't want any space in here. So her ear should be pinned right to his shoulder. That would give her better leverage. But notice how he's all leaned back. What's happened here is with her hands low and close to the hip, it's pushed his center of gravity back. So it doesn't take a lot of leverage from the leg to throw him off balance but ideally she would want her head pinned and would want to follow him to the ground with no space so let's go ahead and watch the rest of this video driving him to the ground that would also prevent injury for herself so if she doesn't have any space she's not going to run into this individual on the way um, to the ground so let's go ahead and watch the rest of this here pinning in the head pulling in on the hips using that leg for leverage driving him to the ground. Now ideally she would want to take full mount or side control from that position. So next one's going to be double underhooks again, but this time we're going to use a leg hook. Instead of bumping the back of the leg, we're going to actually going to hook the leg. So let's watch that. So he's pinned his head to the chest and he's clasped the hands. Now you notice on this variation of double underhooks, the hands are low to the hips for leverage, but anytime you do that, see this little space here? She could easily work this other arm in and get back to a neutral clinch. One arm in, one arm out, and neutralize this position. So you have to be fast. When the hands drop, sometimes double underhooks are much higher where they're right underneath the armpits, and that gives you pretty good control. Um, but when you get ready to use it as a method of taking somebody down, a lot of times it's easier to drop these hands down to the hips, but the only problem with that, you've got to be quick because it creates this little space here that they can work this other arm in and neutralize um, that clinch, essentially getting you back to a neutral clinch where y'all are both in the same position. So now let's watch what he does with his leg. So go ahead and release that. Hooking the leg. That instantly pulled her off balance. He didn't really even have to do much with his head by driving her off the ground because by using the double underhooks that sunk her hips in so that she couldn't sprawl away from him and now he's hooked the leg and that's going to drive her to the ground and he's going to follow her to the ground so scooping the leg in slow motion here and then following him all the way to the ground and here it is a little faster so it's, it's pretty good takedown uh, a lot of times you would use this method here of hooking the leg if somebody's back was up against the wall because as you hook the leg, you can draw them off the wall or if they're up against a cage. It work, it's pretty effective. So drawing that leg out. And again, you notice here, let me back that up so that you can see what I'm 
looking at. A lot of space here. Ideally, he wouldn't want any space. And here's something also to pay attention to. Notice how she's using her hand to absorb some of the force. You would not want your wrist turned out. She's doing the appropriate technique to kind of absorb some of that force and use her hand as a shock absorber. But if she was to turn this wrist away, turning her hand out away from the body, that arm would lock out and it would most likely damage your wrist. It could also pop the shoulder out of socket. So she's using the appropriate technique of rolling across the arm and using it as a shock absorber. Because not only does she have her own weight now, but she also has the person taking her down. Um, his weight is also combined. Actually, he's supporting it, but if he did the technique properly with the head pinned and no space, he would force her to absorb the impact of not only her own weight, but his weight as well. So let's go ahead and watch this. So uses a head, pulls the leg out, drives her to the ground. And that is it for the double underhooks and double underhooks um, hooking the leg. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.